French big Alex Saar might be the number one pick come the 2024 NBA Draft. This is Florence Sealing. let's break him down. We have to start with Alex Saar right at the basket. Right now, this is where he's most productive, catching the ball and finishing strong. The Perth big has a quick first jump which allows him to immediately elevate above the rim once he secures the pass. At 7 foot 1, it's tough for defenders to keep Star away from the rim once he's already stationed there. He's still somewhat wiry, definitely has room to get stronger, and he has slightly narrow shoulders. But Star's combination of size, pop off the ground, and pretty good hands make him very effective already. As we'll get into, Star is not overly physical, but his toughness and his motor have improved and now he's drawing fouls and and ones fairly consistently. At this stage, the Frenchman will end most possessions in or around the dunker spot. That is where he serves as an easy release valve for guards once they drive into the paint and they can hit him with easy drop-offs and pocket passes. Sar's main role this season has been at the rim, but his other function with the Perth Wildcats has been to space the floor. The percentages for the 7 foot 1 big aren't that amazing. He's shooting about 29% on just 10 makes for the NBL season. So I think that the expectations for Saar being a 3 point shooter right off the bat might have to be tempered a bit. But given the mix of his size and his youth, I'm more focused on the process of how he's getting these shots and makes. The first thing to note is that Sar's ability to shoot and convert threes has really improved year on year. I think there's a clear path when it comes to him getting better, which is very encouraging for the future. Then I like that he's being used both as a pick and pop threat, where I have faith in his three point shot when he has time and space, but also he's increasingly comfortable with quickly moving to the wing, setting his feet as he catches the ball with a quick one two step and then letting it fly. Of course, the hope is that Sars flashes from downtown eventually solidify. In the long term, there isn't that much gravity in a sub 30% three-point shooter. Teams will be happy to let the French big have that shot, and in some ways, they already don't mind that much. Despite his recent improvements, Sars' release is slow and somewhat mechanical. I'm not overly concerned though, he's 7 foot 1, so I think it will be tough to bother his shot regardless. But the truth is, like I hinted at, patience is going to be needed. Sar is not a good or maybe even a decent shooter at this juncture. I've seen comparisons to Jaron Jackson Jr. thrown around, and I do get the gist of that, but Sar is shooting under 30% from 3, compared to Jaron Jackson's near 40% in college. On top of that, Jackson also made about 80% of his free throws, while Saar is hovering around a very, very improvable 57%. So if anything, I think that Miles Turner might be a more appropriate comparison offensively. I'm not exceedingly high on Saar's 3-point shooting right now, but I do see a clear and functional path for him going forward once his conversion improves. Now, I'm not sure that he ever becomes a sniper from deep, again, more Miles Turner than Jaron Jackson, but he can become more dangerous if he hits in the low to mid 30s and ups his volume. Should this happen, Sar has flashed the means to attack a closeout, put the ball on the floor, and create a little bit for himself. If anything, as we'll get into, I think this might be where Sar's self creation is most advanced. Now, I'm aware that only some of these clips feature Sar directly attacking a closeout, but I think plays where he handles in a straight line, gets lower than his defender, and creates a play are translatable to those situations. At 7 foot 1, with length and real pop, this is really appealing. And like with his shot, Sar's handle and court awareness has seen linear improvement over the last few years. This idea has also shown up in the open court. Sar can act as a ball handler here from time to time, and Perth has even had him bring the ball up quickly and attack the paint. 
We can see that here, with Saur suddenly attacking his big with a full head of steam, and then using all of his length to finish. It's worth noting though, that most of these glimpses came in pre-season, and Perth hasn't tapped into them as much in more competitive action. Still, they show up here and there, and they really make you think. Even if Saur's handle is not entirely functional yet, like we'll break down, I do think NBA teams are going to want to build on this given the direction that the league is headed in. Quickly getting into Saar's self-creation, we've again seen some flashes of him handling the ball a little bit and rising into a jumper. It's pretty interesting, especially since Saar knows that he can keep it simple, and then he shoots over the top using his size. Usually, one or two dribbles will suffice to create the space that he needs. This can and should be effective against mismatches, and Saar right now is most comfortable around the free throw line or elbows. But down the line, I'm hoping that this can extend to face-ups, as well as post-ups, where I still think that Saar needs to keep growing. So far, we're still dealing with a small sample size from the mid-range, so I will be closely tracking all of this for the rest of the season. But despite the glimpses, and similar to his 3-point shooting, Sar's handle is nowhere near to a fully baked product. Given his measurements and position, I'm not expecting anything crazy, nor does he need it, but it's prudent to break everything down in depth when discussing a potential number one pick. The flashes of Sar's flexibility and how he can get low to the ground are definitely intriguing, but they're not really functional in terms of breaking down a set defense or even getting to his spots in the half court nearly all of the time. As we've been seeing, Sar can struggle when he has to go left, and also, he can improve his tightness and security on spin moves. But also, I think he has a footwork issue that needs to be corrected ASAP. In the big picture, this is nothing to worry about, but too often, Sar will travel and turn the ball over when he's trying to attack off the catch, or take advantage of a sloppy closeout. We broke down earlier how Saar has the means to be dangerous in these types of scenarios, so fixing this, I think, should help the French prospect quite a bit. Looking ahead, I also want to see Saar build on what I call the basics of being a big. Right now, he can roam around the perimeter a little bit too much, and he can phase in and out of games more than he should given his tools. For example, he's definitely someone who would much rather set a screen and then pop out to three rather than roll hard to the rim. As I said, his motor has improved, but I'd like for the Frenchman to be even more of a presence on the interior. Then Saar really has to keep growing as a rebounder. We've seen some tip dunks already this season, which is nice. But keep in mind, he's averaging under 5 rebounds a night. So far, he hasn't had more than 9 rebounds in a game either, which is slightly concerning for a 7 foot 1 prospect who is playing the 5 quite often. Saar needs to become more physical, and he needs to employ those same hands that he uses to score easy points at the basket. Too often, he gets out rebounded or boxed out and I don't trust him to collect boards that fall even a little bit outside of his area. Finally, I'd like to get into Sar's passing. With 11 assists and 17 turnovers for the NBL season, this has not been his calling card, but I do think there's something here to explore. At 7 foot 1, it's a given that Sar can see over the top of defenses, but I'm curious about how he sees the actual game. I think his processing is still somewhat slow, but fairly often I've been impressed by how he eventually ends up making the correct read. In the NBA, I expect that the Frenchman will be used even more as a roller, so if he's able to spray out passes to shooters, 
or to other bigs down low, then that will be very useful. We've already seen some glimpses of this. Right now, I actually consider Alex Saar to be more of a defense-oriented prospect. He has plenty of potential and possible uses on offense as we just saw, but he's more advanced and dangerous on this side of the floor. It all starts with his rim protection at 7'1 with a nearly 7'5 wingspan. Saar averages a bit over one block a game, but I think that understates his defensive ability. For instance, watch here against the G League Ignite how he decelerates with Ron Holland and ends up with the block. Or here in this clip, Saar is in the pick and roll, he's guarding in a soft drop, and he winds up rejecting the guard. In this play, it's a nice switch onto the ball handler. Saar opens up his hips, he stays with the drive, and he forces the turnover. But also, something that I really like is that Saar can create defensive plays without necessarily getting on the stat sheet. Here, he tracks the drive all the way through the paint, he takes away the drop off with his length, and that allows Bryce Cotton to pounce into the passing lane to get the steal. We see something similar here against former NBA guard Matthew De La Vadova. Sar stays vertical at the basket, and he forces the turnover. The Perth Wildcats big swallows up space, and his lateral mobility is pretty incredible already. Sar flies around the floor, and he can create havoc multiple times over a single possession. In this one, Sar chases Bobby Clintman around the perimeter, but watch how he keeps an eye on the drive as well. The Frenchman tracks it and snuffs it out. So far this season, Perth hasn't had Saar blitz ball handlers too much, but I hope and think that this will be tapped into more often in the NBA given his agility and lateral quickness. As for improvements, Saar still struggles against real heavy, ground-based bigs, such as former NBA center Aaron Baines, for instance. Some centers can get into Saar's body and totally dislodge him. He's not strong enough yet to hold his ground in the paint all of the time. Saar's second jump is also good, but I'm not sure that it's excellent. This can cause him some problems while his positioning, especially in the pick and roll, still improves. The Frenchman can still do a better job taking away both the drive and the pass to the roller at the same time. This idea can also come into play when Saar is flat-footed and doesn't leave the ground, even though he has the means to react a bit late because of his pop and length. Right now, Saar is a top 5 lock, but he could even go number 1 come draft time. His role on offense might end up being quite simple, catching and finishing, rolling hard, and taking threes once in a while. But at the same time, he's shown enough to make me believe that he can have a really intriguing high ceiling. And then, as we just broke down on defense, the Frenchman's floor is already super high, with his measurements, ground coverage, switchability, and potential versatility. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Alex Saar, and make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll catch you guys next time.